Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 8. We're going to look at two of the simplest waves that can propagate in a plasma. Electron plasma waves, which occurs when you allow the electrons to have a temperature, in contrast to the assumption that was made when we derived the plasma frequency, and ion acoustic waves, again, which arise when you allow the ions to have a temperature. The reason they're called acoustic waves will become clear at the end of this lecture. Now we're going to look at plasma waves that are generated because we assign electrons a temperature. Recall the plasma frequency from a previous lecture. In deriving this we assumed that the electron temperature is zero. We now assume that the temperature is greater than zero and again obtain an expression for the angular frequency omega. We essentially go through the same procedure that we did in obtaining the plasma frequency. We start with the fluid equations, which are the continuity equation, the equation of motion, and Poisson's equation. We also assume that there is no magnetic field applied. The difference in this approach is that because the electrons now have a temperature, we may have a pressure gradient. So we must first find that. Assume that the system is adiabatic, that is, no energy enters or leaves. We need to use the thermodynamic equation of state for an ideal gas, which is given by this expression, where C is a constant, where gamma is the ratio of the specific heats at constant pressure and temperature. This ratio can also be given by this expression, where N is the number of degrees of freedom. We're going to deal with a one-dimensional case, so n equals 1, which makes gamma equal 3. Let's differentiate now the expression for pressure in the equation of state. We can simplify this expression further by dividing both sides by the expression for the equation of state. On simplifying, we obtain this. We need to eliminate P. We do this by substituting the ideal gas law equation for P. Simplifying, we obtain this expression. But recalling that this is a one-dimensional problem, we can rewrite the expression as this. Now apply the linearization procedure that was used in the last lecture to the fluid and Poisson equations. That is, we assume that the three parameters associated with density, velocity, and electric fields have added onto them a small perturbation. These are the parameters given with the subscript 1. We also impose periodic functions to these perturbations given by these expressions. The explicit derivation was done in the tutorial of lecture 7, but can also be found on pages 84 and 87 of Chen. We finally obtain the relationship we were after for the angular frequency omega. This is known as a dispersion relation. It will soon become clear why it's labeled that way where omega p is the plasma angular frequency and v is the thermal speed given by this expression. Let's plot the dispersion relation and look at some of its features. The slope of the line between a point on the curve, p, and the origin is the phase velocity given by omega on k. A tangent to the curve is the group velocity given by d omega dk. So as you can see, the group velocity at the origin is zero because the tangent to the curve has zero slope. Also, the phase velocity at the origin is infinite because the slope of the line between the origin and the curve is infinite. Note that the minimum angular frequency is omega p. There are no frequencies below that. That implies there is no wave propagation for angular frequencies below omega p. Interestingly, the asymptote to the curve, which is both a group and a phase velocity, has the same value at the square root of 3 on 2 times the thermal speed. We'll now carry out the same analysis that we did for electrons, but this time it's for ions. We can use the linearization procedure of the fluid and Poisson equations for ions in a similar treatment to that of the electrons. We won't go through the derivation here because it's very similar to that of the electrons with minor variations. 
but you can see this derivation in section 4.6 of Chen. The end result of the derivation is a dispersion relation, but this time it's for an ion wave. Specifically, it's known as an ion acoustic wave, given by this expression, where Ti is the ion temperature and M is the ion mass. Note that in contrast to the dispersion relation of the electrons, here we find that the phase and group velocities are both equal and constant. Also, interestingly, that even if the ion temperature was set to zero, we find that the dispersion relation is dominated by the electron temperature. So let's try to get a physical feel as to why it's called an ion acoustic wave. Let's imagine this array of ions. If there is a force on one layer of the ions, we find that the wave propagates by Coulomb repulsion from one layer to another, which is a very similar picture to ordinary sound waves, which propagate by compression. The electron and ion plasma waves are known as electrostatic waves, 